As we feed our body with its daily nourishment, let us not forget that more importantly, we must feed our souls with the Word of God, the food for our souls. Be a part of spreading the good news and nourishing others. Subscribe, like, share, and tap the notification bell in order to be updated every time we have a new reflection for you. Come, let us partake of the food for our souls. My dear brothers and sisters, we are in the 21st Sunday in Ordinary Time. I invite you to join me in reading, reflecting, and praying over the Gospel this Sunday. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Many of Jesus' disciples who were listening to him said, This saying is hard. Who can accept it? Since Jesus knew that his disciples were murmuring about this, he said to them, Does this shock you? What if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life, while the flesh is of no avail. The words I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But there are some of you who do not believe. Jesus knew from the beginning the ones who would not believe and the one who would betray him. And he said, For this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted him by my Father. As a result of this, many of his disciples returned to their former way of life and no longer accompanied him. Jesus then said to the twelve, do you also want to leave? Simon Peter answered him, Master, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and are convinced that you are the Holy One of God. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, our Gospel is Sunday is taken from the Gospel of St. John. And of course, as you have heard at the very beginning, John tells us many of the disciples of Jesus who were listening to him said, this saying is hard, who can accept it? Of course, the, question of, the first question we ask ourselves is, to what does the word saying refer? Well, my dear brothers and sisters, we are in chapter 6 of the Gospel of St. John. And if you look at the sixth chapter of John, you will notice that almost two-thirds, like beginning with verse 22, it is called as the bread of life discourse. Remember that two Sundays ago, we were already in chapter 6. That's the time when Jesus was telling those people who were following him, he said, Amen, Amen, I say to you, you look for me not because you saw signs, because you ate the loaves and were filled. And then later on, Jesus would, would, would be telling them, I am the bread of life that came down from heaven. And you can just imagine the reaction of the people during that time. For us nowadays, it might not be very shocking because we know Jesus to be the Son of God. But the people listening to him during that time, they practically know Jesus. That's why when Jesus said, I came down from heaven, that is something that is shocking for them, very difficult to believe. That's why in that particular part, in the sixth chapter of John, when Jesus said that, what was the reaction of the people? They said, isn't this Jesus, the son of Joseph? Don't we know his father and his mother? That's why. If they practically know Jesus, the father, the mother, where he was born, when he was born, of course, it will be difficult for them to believe that Jesus came down from heaven. They would be saying, of course, we know you, we know where you were born, that's why you did not come down from heaven. Now, forward from there, you know, verses after that, Jesus would be saying to them even that I am the bread of life that came down from heaven. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood will have life within him. Can you imagine if for, for Jesus to say that he came down from heaven is already difficult for them to understand, difficult to accept. How much more when Jesus says, whoever eats my flesh 
and drinks my blood will have life within him. It will be difficult to conceive that they will be eating the flesh of Jesus, that they will be drinking his blood. For us nowadays, it will be easier for us to understand and to accept because we all know that fast forward to the supper, to the last supper, when Jesus would take the bread and say, this is my body. And when he takes the chalice or the cup and says, this is my blood. And of course, in the sixth chapter during the time, the Last Supper has not yet happened. Even for us now, in the celebration of the Eucharist, every time we celebrate the Eucharist, when we partake of the body and blood of Christ. That's why, as I said, for us, it's easier for us to believe but for them during that time, for the first time to hear Jesus say that, that he came down from heaven, and worse for him to say, whoever eats his flesh and drinks his blood will have eternal life. That's why in our gospel as a continuation this Sunday, when they heard that saying of Jesus, eh? St. John tells us, this saying is hard for them. It's inconceivable. For them, it's difficult to understand. For them, it's something difficult to accept and believe. That's why they said, who can accept it? And since Jesus knew that his disciples were murmuring about it, he said to them, does this shock you? My dear brothers and sisters, of course, in our gospel, it shows us that indeed there are many things that Jesus could be telling us that may be using our human mind difficult to understand and more difficult to accept. And yet, because Jesus said it, and if we consider him to be our Lord, to be the Messiah, therefore, even though sometimes we could not completely comprehend it, it will be a test of faith. That's why in our Gospel this Sunday, notice he even said, for this reason, I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted him by my Father. In the other part of the gospel, it says, unless no one can come to me unless it, he is drawn by my Father. So everything really begins with God's inspiration. Everything is grace. God grants it to us. Because come to think of it, that's basically what faith is. Faith is an assent to something that you may not completely comprehend, but because you have your trust and belief in the person who said it, you will have to accept. Since it is Jesus who said, we may not completely believe it, we, or rather, we may, may not completely understand it, we may not completely comprehend it, but if we believe in Jesus to be our Lord, then when he says it, it must be true. It must be something we have to believe. It's so sad. In our Gospel this Sunday, John tells us, as a result of this, many of his disciples, doesn't only refer to the twelve. When we are talking of the disciples here, it refers to the crowds or to all the people who follow the Lord. The Gospel of St. John said, many of his disciples returned to their former way of life and no longer accompanied Jesus. My dear brothers and sisters, many times in our lives we encounter things that we have difficulty understanding, even problems and difficulties in life that sometimes it's difficult to understand why God would allow us to go through. And yet, it is the moment that we can really show our faith in God that in spite of the many things that we may not completely understand and comprehend, when the Lord tells us, we have to accept. The beauty of the faith of Peter in our Gospel this Sunday. <clears throat> Sorry. In our Gospel, when Jesus saw that many of those people returned to their former way of life and stopped following him, he turned to the twelve and said, Do you also want to leave? Simon Peter answered him, Master, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. I believe, imagining Peter at this point, perhaps Peter did not even like understand completely what Jesus was saying. Perhaps in the person of Peter, he might be asking, how can that really happen? That I would eat his flesh, that I would drink his blood. But since he said it, Lord, you are my Messiah. 
you are my Lord. You have the words of everlasting life. My dear brothers and sisters, Jesus is our Messiah. He is our Lord. He has the words of eternal life. When we put our trust in Him, even in moments difficult to understand, difficult to accept, those are the moments we will have eternal life. Let us pray. God, our loving Father, in the midst of the many difficulties that we encounter in life, we ask you to help us, just the Father, to give us the inspiration to be able to put our trust in you, to put our trust in the Father, that we may deepen our faith in you, that through the difficulties we encounter in life and perhaps the confusions we go through in life, may we have a deeper and stronger faith in you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a blessed Sunday, everyone. God bless you. Thank you for partaking of the Word of God, the food for our souls, and being part of spreading the good news and nourishing others. May God bless and protect you.